Hey everybody, Jason Garfoot here, the Senior Technical Advisor with Global Finishing Solutions. Uh, Steve Love, Parts and Filter Sales Manager. Today we're going to talk to you about filters for your paint booths. Um, we get a lot of questions about filters. Uh, I'm sure you way more than me. Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, what are some of the more common yeah. things you get asked? So, uh, I get th really three main, main questions when it comes to filters is why is changing filters important? Uh, when do I need to change my filters and why should I use the, the OEM provided filters? Um, so this first section and we'll address this first question would be why is changing filters important? Um, and you know, Jason, you've been in a, worked in body shops. Uh, clogged and overloaded filters really hinders the, the, the paint job and on anything that you see. So if you're not properly maintaining those, you get dust, you get debris, it really affects the paint job on, on whether it's vehicles or you, you name it. So. And painters hate buffing, and anytime you're buffing, you're not painting, so it's costing your shop money. Absolutely. Uh, you know, one of the other, some of the other benefits to it would be prevents downtime. I mean, that's a huge one. Uh, your boost's not running, you're not making money. Uh, fire hazards, um, and so that could be anywhere from uh, overspray collecting on stuff in the booth, causing static issues, um, overloaded filters piled up in a corner somewhere, that could be a, an issue as well. Um, overspray accumulation, and I use that into more of a safety where if you have so much overspray accumulation where it's causing you know issues with the lights and that becomes a visibility thing, or you have so much that it's causing paint runoff on the floor from your filters, it's a tripping hazard or a slip. Yeah. Um, so and on the automotive side, it's uh, a huge quality issue. So anytime there's overspray accumulation, you're gonna know pretty quickly in an automotive booth. Um, so for you automotive guys out there, you'll notice that's when your, when your clear coat starts to look a little rough, um, almost a little hazy sometimes. A lot of that can be that overspray is kind of churning instead of getting sucked out through the filters. And then as your clear coat starts to tack over, that stuff slowly settles back on the panel and gives it that rough feel. Absolutely, absolutely. And finally, I think the, the, if there's one thing out of that first question of why is it important, it's the number one maintenance item you can do on your paint booth. Um, so it's the one thing that keeps it operating. Uh, if you can continue to change the filters regularly or as they should be, your booth will stay up and running. And it's easy. It's very easy to do. One of the simplest things you can do to your booth. So the next question I get asked is, when do I change my filters? And so that's a very loaded question and it's very pendant on a lot of variables. Um, and so there's usually three questions I ask and, and the first one would be your process, the second would be your environment. So what's the outside of your building? What, what's the inside shop look like? Uh, and third would be your equipment. Um, so starting with your process, uh, could be, you know, the operating hours that you're running, uh, the paint type, the paint color, which Jason, you'll talk a little bit about, and then the transfer efficiencies. Um, and so I know in, in your background, you've, you've seen this and, and maybe you can spread a little bit more. Yeah. Um, especially, well, the first thing you talked about, so in the process side, so your operating hours. So. Um, we see shops now staying open and running a lot more hours than they used to. Um, there's shops now even running double shifts. Keep in mind the, the lifetime of a filter, if everything else stays the same, isn't just dependent on how many hours they're in an environment. It's the actual operational hours, so time of air moving through those. So if you double the shifts, you're probably going to have to change your filters Absolutely. twice as often. Yep. Um, the other big one I see out there is in the, the paint type you were yeah. talking, and that's from solvent to water, there's going to be a difference on how quick those clog up your filters. But then even within an individual product line, if you're spraying a lot of white, you might notice that your filters are plugging a little bit faster. So white colors are typically a little more viscous. Um, a lot of the solid colors are. Um, they should be properly reduced, but even so, a lot of them are still a little more viscous. So keep in mind that that same viscosity that you're pouring into that paint pump is leaving your paint gun. So that's going to go into your filters. Um, and if you're using on the transfer efficiency side, if it's a new painter who's maybe learning, not all the paints making it on the panel, there's a lot of time with the trigger held while that paint gun is away, 
that's also stuff that's going to end up in your filters or even the paint gun if it's not dialed in properly that can affect your transfer efficiency so it's important to turn to people like Steve they can really help you determine how long your filters are going to last yeah absolutely yeah um, the second part of that was the environment which I talked about and what I mean by that is where is your shop or paint booth located um, whether inside of a bigger shop or where it's located in your city or county or country or state rather um, so you could be somewhere where you have a lot of cottonwood or you're next to a rock quarry and you know, the air that you pull from the outside that's going to be filtered into your paint booth is definitely going to be different um, if you didn't have some of those you know different debris and, and things like that so that's always another big question we have and it really is holds true on the intake side um, and so that's where you'll see a lot more frequent changes of the intake filters the air makeup pre-filters um, it, it definitely changing those pre-filters and your air makeup more frequently in those types of situations will definitely save on the longevity of the intake filters inside your booth. Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, crucial to yeah, the absolutely. overall quality absolutely. of your paint jobs. Um, especially, again, it's my background's on the automotive side, so that's typically what I speak to. We've seen people that do a phenomenal job at changing their regular intake filters and their pit or exhaust filters, um, but a lot of them didn't even know there was filters in the actual air makeup unit itself. Um, and they were in a high pollen area. So, I mean, those things plug up quickly and they have no idea why their performance is down even though they changed their other filters. So it's good to know where all those are at and how they can be affected. Yeah, then, then the last question I ask on that is, is your equipment. So are you a refinish, auto body stop, shop, restoration shop, or are you an industrial manufacturer? It's, maybe it's trailer frames or you're doing, you know, different levels of filtration. So they're not all equal. So those are very different. Uh, each paint booth style has its own uh, filters, maintenance set, set up for it. Um, and then obviously the variables we talked about with uh, the operating hours and the paint types and those. So they're not all created the same. So there's, sometimes you gotta do a little investigation before you can say it's a blanket this many hours, you have to change your filters. Are there simple like tools or tricks people can use to monitor their filters? Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the things we talk about is a manometer. Uh, manometer, you can definitely, if you set it up correctly, it will tell you exactly when these filters are getting loaded on the exhaust side uh, and when they should be changed out. If you don't have that, you know, then it's really important to be, be on a strict maintenance schedule. Um, as I mentioned, the manometer is a very simple tool. Um, we sell it at GFS. You can buy it probably at Amazon. You can buy it anywhere. But they're very easy to, to install, and, and they will definitely help you monitor when to change out your filters. Mm -hmm. So Simple, no brainer way to just know on the exhaust side when your filters are yeah, getting the, used up. The intake's a little bit different. And again, like I go back to the environment, it depends on where you're located and the air that's coming either into your shop or into your paint booth. So um, those can last a lot, they typically last a lot, a lot longer than exhaust filters. Um, but based on the longevity of those, you know, you could be talking uh, months and months of usage versus, you know, an exhaust filter might be a week to two weeks to three weeks. So uh, there's definitely a difference there. Uh, the last thing I talked about was when to change. We talked about the manometer and we, Again, the, the million dollar question are the hours or the times, the days, the months, how long to change them. I like to do everything in operating hours. I think that's the easiest way to do it because it's, it's, it's hard to process. A, you know, if a shop's doing four cars a day versus seven or eight cars a day, their filter change schedule is going to be different between the two. So um, what I talk about, the air, air makeup filters, the air replacement filters, we call those pre-filters. Um, those a month, two months, 160 operating hours, 360 operating hours, they could vary dramatically based on where you are, but you should monitor those at least once a month, take a look at them, if not more. Um, we get into some of the intake medias, uh, like you see behind us, this is refinish style booth. Uh, this material, if you're keeping that pre-filter clean, this should last you anywhere between 1500 hours to 1800 hours of operating time. Could be more, could be a little bit less, but it's a ballpark. Um, on our industrial side, we use uh, panel filters, and they have a, a they're tackified. Those could follow the same suit. You could get uh, 1,500 hours out of some of those. That could be plus or minus based on what your shop looks like, what that air coming in looks like. Um, and then lastly, the exhaust, and that's probably the the most common question we get: the exhaust filters. How often should I change them? 
really got to use the, the manometer and you really have to follow through with what your paint process is and look at a strict maintenance schedule for those. It could be 40 hours, it could be 100 hours, but it's very dependent on your process. And the nice thing about that though is once you have a schedule in place, you'll know pretty quickly if maybe what we had set is too long of a window or too short of a window. Sure. So it's very easy to adjust. And once you get dialed into that, it stays pretty consistent um, on the exhaust side throughout the year. So the nice thing is it's, it's easy to adjust those. Um, you'll know pretty quickly if, if you do need to extend or shorten them, um, like I said. But um, unless you change something significant in your area, so you change your paint line, um, paint brand even, um, can have an effect on that. Absolutely. In, unless you change one of those major things, that schedule should hold pretty true. So one more thing um, we have here to cover is, I get asked this all the time. So there's a bunch of different brands of filters, different styles, types. So what I get asked is, why should I use the OEM filters? Yeah, it's a good question. And there's a lot of great filters out there. Um, we recommend using the OEM filters. They're, they're engineered specific for the booth for your operation. Um, they keep the warranty valid. We have them available. Uh, so th that's not a question or an issue. Uh, but yeah, they really are key to the performance of the paint booth. Uh, if you go to a lower grade filter, um, where you, you pay what you get for, and now you're talking, well, you might not get the longevity, it's a cheaper filter, but you're also running, you might run into issues where you're not quite meeting code on certain things. So that's another thing to keep in, in, in mind on that. So we always recommend looking at the OEM filtration. Yeah, and I, I see that mistake made a lot where people just buy the cheapest filter they can. Um, it's okay to buy the cheapest best filter you can, but don't just get something simply because it's the cheapest. Um, it ends up costing you more down the line. Absolutely. So it might save you a little on each filter change, but now if you have to have somebody go in and replace a fan or your belts or it puts so much strain on the motor because it's overloaded with overspray, um, that's going to cost far more than making sure you have a good quality yeah. filter. Yeah. And the way I always like to associate it to people is if it's time to do an oil change on your car, you don't, don't just go buy some random cheap filter. Uh, you have to get the one specified for that exact vehicle. And the more high performance that vehicle is, the more in tune Absolutely. it gets. Um, you get to some of those crazy race car style engines or even some of the newer luxury vehicles. You can't even go to a regular parts store and get it. Um, you actually have to go to the dealer and they have access to the OEM parts because they know the only way it's going to perform is with that. Most of the booths, especially the ones GFS provides, are that top tier sort of product. They're meant to run an optimal, optimal performance, not just for efficiency, but for the quality of what you're gonna produce work-wise. So make sure you use the proper filters recommended by GFS yep. and Steve here. Yeah. Um, he can get you the right filters for exactly what you're doing. Yeah, if you have questions on that too, I mean, we're more than happy to answer questions, whether it's you know our brand or questions of other things, we're willing to work with anyone on and any type sort of questions they might have. Uh, if there's anything I can recommend, it's follow the owner's manual recommendations that you have with your equipment. Uh, make sure the filters are installed correctly, uh, which is always a huge question that we get. Uh, and then re review your manometer readings. Um, it, you know, if those are really key. Um, the last thing I will tell you is to keep an extra set of filters on hand. You never know if you're gonna have an accident in the booth where someone drops a bunch of paint. Um, you, you might have to close down for whatever reason or, or open up for something. It's always good to have them. The last thing you wanna do is call on a Friday afternoon to get stuff overnighted uh, you know, to Utah. That's gonna cost a lot of money. So, uh, but yeah, those are my recommendations. Yeah, and, and things happen. I mean, the situation we're in now with COVID. So if you were an automotive shop and you were gonna change your filters, say yeah. on a Monday, and all of a sudden everything is shut down, now you're stuck with a booth that's not operational sure. until you can eventually get somebody in there to change those. So yeah. having filters on hand is, is basically a no cost win-win. You're gonna have to buy those filters eventually, just staying one change ahead is always a fantastic idea. Absolutely. We hope you found the information today useful on filter changes um, and filter information. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free, feel free to reach out or comment below. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're always here to answer any questions you have. If you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like and subscribe. 
That way you get notified with our latest, most up-to-date videos that we have coming out, and we have a lot planned soon. So thanks, everybody, for watching.